In this example, we're going to analyze this circuit that's got a BJD, BJT transistor in it and demonstrate the kinds of calculations that you go to, first of all, to determine the state or the region in which the transistor is acting, whether it's in the cutoff region, the active or linear region, or the saturation region. And we're then going to demonstrate what happens as we increase the base voltage here, which, increase, which in turn then increases the base to emitter voltage. So in doing this type of a calculation, just by looking at it, we can't really tell what state it's in. We have, it in, we have an idea that given that this is two volts here and that the emitter is just tied to ground, we've got a pretty good idea that the base to emitter um, junction is going to be forward biased, which suggests that it's going to be in either the linear region or possibly the saturation region, depending upon how um, how far the transistor is, is driven. So let's just go ahead and when we're doing these kinds of calculations, we're going to assume that it's the transistor is biased in the linear or active region and analyze it using that assumption until we prove otherwise. So the main assumption that that then comes into play then, or the main um, result of that assu assumption is that I sub C, the collector current, which is the current flowing this direction, is equal to beta times I sub B, where I sub B is the current flowing into the base. So with that, and assuming that it's in the active region, we're going to also assume that VBE is equal to 0.7 volts. So given that, then, we can calculate I sub B. I sub B is simply then VBB. Let's write it down that way. VBB minus VB. E divided by R sub B, which in this case then is equal to 2 volts minus 0.7 divided by the 200,000 ohm resistor, which gives us a value of 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 amps, or 6.5 microamps. I sub C then is going to be t beta times I sub B, which is beta, as we're told, is 100. 100 times that then gives us I sub C is equal to 6.5 times 10 to the minus fourth amps. Now we can determine the voltage, well, the voltage across this resistor, which then allows us to calculate the collector voltage. We're going to go ahead and note that it's the collector voltage relative to ground is then, in fact, the voltage from the collector to the emitter, or VCE. So VCE is going to equal VCC, the voltage here, minus I sub C times the resistor current, times R sub C, which in this case is equal to, VCC is equal to 10, minus I sub C, 6.5 times 10 to the minus fourth, times the 5 kilo ohm resistor gives us an I sub C of e, uh, which equals 6.75 volts. Alrighty, with the voltage here at 6.75 volts, the voltage at the base, we're told that the base to emitter voltage is 7 tenths of a volt, so the voltage at the base is 7 tenths of the volt, the vo voltage here is 6.75 volts, and clearly the PN junction between the base and the collector is still reverse biased. This is still significantly higher in voltage than the base. And our assumption then is valid. It is active in the, or it is in the active region, and this relationship holds. Let's just remind ourselves that this relationship, that I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B, is only true if the transistor is in the active, in the active region. Now, what happens as we start to increase VBB? Let's just make a little table here. We have VBB, and we'll let VBB go 3 volts, and then to 4 volts, and then to 4.5 volts. I sub B, we'll include then I sub C in our table, and VCE. So I sub B, again, assuming that we're in the active region, I sub B is going to be, and assuming that this is still 7 tenths of a volt, we'll have then I sub B is equal to um, 3 volts now, VBB minus V, 
BE, which is 0.7 volts, divided by the 200,000, which turns out to be um, 11.5 microamps. I sub C, again, assuming we're in the linear region, so I sub C is going to equal beta times I sub B, or 100 times that, gives us um, 1.15 milliamps. VCE, the voltage at the collector, will once again be 10 minus um, I sub C, which is the 1.15, 1.15 milliamps times 10 to the third times 5,000. And this time, VCE is equal to 4.25 volts. So we increased the voltage here, which increased I sub B, which increased I sub C, which increased the drop across R sub C. The drop across R sub C now brings the voltage at the collector in this instance down, instance down to 4.25 volts. So when VBE was 3 volts, I'm sorry, when VBE was, VBB was 2 volts, the collector voltage was 6.75 volts. It's now down to 4.25. You can see that as the base current is increasing, the drop across this resistor is increasing, and it's drawing this voltage down. But it's still at 4.25 volts. This voltage here, we're still assuming that it's 7 tenths of a volt. And the PN junction between the base and the emitter, or the base and the collector, we still will, um, we still find it to be reverse biased. And in fact, the transistor is still in the active region. Now let's increase VBB to 4 volts. Now, I sub B is going to be 4 minus 0.7 divided by 200K, which equals 16.5 microamps. I sub C is going to be 10 times that, which gives us 1.65 microamps. And VCE now is going to be 10 minus uh, you know, the I sub C times the 5 kilo ohms, which gives us then 1.75 volts. 0.7, and, and of course, this base to emitter junction voltage may have increased a little bit above 0.7 volts, but not a whole lot because the I sub C current here, the I sub B current, I guess is a better, better way of looking at it, increases greatly across that PN junction for small increases of V, B, E. And that large increase here reflects then a, as a large increase here. So we find that going through this process of increasing V, B, E from 2 volts on up now to 4.5 volts, the base to emitter voltage doesn't really change all that much. It may now be 0.72 or 0.73 volts, still relatively close to that 0.7 volt um, value that we're just assuming. So now let's, oh, so at 1.75, we already said that, 1.75 volts, 0.7 volts there, this PN junction is still reverse biased and the transistor is still in the active region. Now, let's increase VBB to 4.5 volts. Then I sub B will be 4.5 minus 0.7 divided by 200K. That equals now, it's up to 19 microamps. So I sub C then is 1.9 milliamps. At least it is if it's still in the linear region, which we're now going to find out is that um, we've got VCE then is equal to 10 minus I sub C, which is 1.9 times 10 to the minus third times 5,000. That equals then 0.5 volts. Well, that calculation was based upon the assumption that this base to collector junction was reverse biased. But with that assumption, we find then that if that were the case, the voltage here would actually have dropped down to 0.5 volts. The voltage at the base is 0.7 volts, so now all of a sudden, it's no longer reverse biased. It may not be completely forward biased, but it's forward biased enough that we can no longer assume that we're in the, satu or the linear region. And in fact, with that voltage bias reversed now, we assume that we're entering into the saturation region. In the saturation region, I sub C is no longer equal to beta I sub B.
In fact, I sub C is no longer a function of I sub B or V B E. At this point, the transistor is wide open. It's conducting as much as it can. And we have the situation where the voltage from the collector to the emitter is the saturation voltage of about 0.1 volts. So increases in VBB will no longer increase the current through the transistor. The current through the transistor is now determined by the source voltage, the size of this resistor, and the saturation voltage across the trans transistor, which we consider to be constant across a very wide range.